Hello, everyone. This is Nicholas P. D. Ugero, and today I have the pleasure and honor of having Will Keller on my channel today. How you doing, man? What's up, brother? Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, not a problem at all. So for people that aren't aware of who you are and what you're all about, if you just want to give a brief introduction of yourself. Yeah, my name is Will Keller. My website's naturalfreedomleague.com, and uh, I'm a content creator. Uh, I consider myself an artist. Um, I'm one of my passions is herbalism and I love nature and, uh, you know, the content that, uh, that I'm creating is all about freedom. Fantastic. So, um, I, I'll be straight up honest with everybody. I, I don't know much about you. I saw you on the funnel conference website. I saw that you're one of the presenters and what you wanted to speak about was intriguing to me and it, it resonated with me a lot. So I just wanted to have you on here to get to know you more and just see what you're all about. So if you want to just uh, get into kind of like what got you started into this whole sort of field of yeah. just uh, research. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so, I mean, as a kid, I'll give you a little bit of background. As a kid, I was always uh, curious, very curious and um, very orientated in my imagination. Um, the how reality worked or culture, I should say, uh, didn't sit well with me. Um, so I was kind of like a weird kid in my own little fantasy land and stuff like that, which I love looking back on that. That's awesome. And as a parent, um, I have a daughter, a nine year old daughter, and she's the same way. And, and I encourage that as very much. But um, as I got a little older, um, I did get into the music industry, got a taste of that, traveled a lot and kind of got a taste of the first hand of uh, entertainment culture and stuff. And it was nice. It was a good experience. But um, there was always something. There's a common theme in my life. And I always wanted to know how how things operated reality at its core basis, nature, how she operated um, the human mind. And these were kind of passions of mine, you know, all through my life. Um, and then I went through some dark days of, uh, of drug addiction and coming pretty much coming out of my career my of my music career uh, partying a lot you know living the single life at the time i uh, just kind of fell into this this uh you know this turmoil of drug addiction and i didn't know how i got in there and um didn't seem like me but here i am and it got to the point where um I, I was in a relationship and my daughter was born. So I had to really take a look at my life. And, um, you know, I had to look in the mirror and ask those hard questions. But upon doing so, it really that was kind of the beginning of my eyes wide open to the world. I've already I already dove into my own psyche and how it operated, um, the inner workings and the insecurities and stuff that I, you know, probably I buried down all throughout my life. But then I started using these same techniques outwards into the world, and it made me seek knowledge and a certain type of knowledge. And I came across the category of occultism. And the word occultism simply means the definition. It means hidden knowledge. So as getting into these mystery traditions and taking in this, uh, this knowledge and then applying it to my own life, um, I eventually and applying it to the world, I eventually came across uh, Mark Passio on whatonearthishappening.com. And he pretty much, it was like the light bulb went off. All the knowledge that I came across, he synthesized it and put it into like real world application. Um, and, you know, you're, I was able to gain an accurate perception of the world and how it worked and our current human condition, where humanity is currently. And um, that's not that's not a fun process. I mean, if you're going to be, you know, you're going to look the truth dead in the eyes. Um, it's not, you know, blissful. Um, there is, you know, some amazing knowledge there that you can apply to yourself. And we must do that. But uh, the truth of the matter of how what's going on in the world uh, is pretty brutal and it, it's horrible. So um naturally taking in this information there was definitely a moral obligation um to myself as a human to speak about this and to <clears throat> excuse me um my fellow humanity if you want to say um and then i had i have a daughter so i want to um i want to pass this knowledge on to her and i want to do everything that i can um for the message of freedom amazing 
Yeah, that's that's excellent. I appreciate that. That's a lot of great information. And I'm, yeah, it's that's awesome that you were like already kind of in that mindset of wanting to look further in from almost the get go. Like you were saying, that's that's great that people like that. You were able to have that still that inquisitive mind, and it wasn't really being stomped out from school or from parents or anything like that. You still were able to have that sense of wonder and just like curiosity, which is excellent. And then you're passing that on to your daughter, which is also a huge blessing because we need more people to raise their children and not just raise them as they get older in that sense, but also like raise them consciously and allow them to have the understanding of a right action versus a wrong action. And not just because you're going to be punished or you're going to be given a reward, but just because it's, these are the principles, like these are fundamental things that we just need to just understand in, in order to have more of a, uh, just, uh, what do you call it? Just more peace in our, in our day-to-day lives or just around our neighborhoods. So it's, uh, so that's an excellent uh, story. I appreciate that. And I wanted to yeah. uh, skip ahead to just talk about natural law since you brought it up. Um, sure. But just really quick, Enzo, thank you, my man, for for coming out here and 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 watching my stream. Uh, hi, Peter. How to, shout out to Enzo and my amigo Miyagi, who is here with me. Please, thanks, man. Yeah, not a problem. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it, Enzo. So, uh, so when you were mentioning uh, like the occult and natural law so for people that aren't aware of what natural law is if you just want to briefly go into that uh and then just what's the fundamental importance of it how is this going to affect my day-to-day life yeah absolutely well yeah it, it affects everyone it actually affects everything these are the the um the the fundamental con- um dynamics that are the whole building blocks of reality and and ourselves so these are <clears throat> natural law is a huge category. Um, you could talk about health at any category you want. Um, natural law comes into play, which are the laws of nature. Um, so these are immutable and binding, universal and non man made, just like nature herself. Nature is not man made. It's it's from creation, from the creator. So and there's laws, there's boundary conditions um the laws of nature that we all um are bound to uh, obviously most people know the physical laws right of gravitation thermodynamics you walk off a cliff you're going to fall down um etc cetera, etc cetera, right we know these we're taught in them in school and stuff but no one actually talks about the metaphysical laws and metaphysical metaphysics the term gets a bad rap it's you know considered like woo woo or something but what that means is beyond physics so we're talking about the energetic laws which the physical realm is the manifested realm meaning this is when energy turns into matter right it's it's denser and so this is like the realm of the effects the cause is the energy we, even modern science nowadays says that you know everything down at its fundamental is energy and even the the, the prima causa the main cause is consciousness so um so lo- looking at i pretty much um even though i love dealing with plants and getting into multiple categories and sections of natural law but my work focuses on um human behavior because these laws apply to the consequences to human behavior and they give us the consequences of our actions. So this is the the true law of attraction or the law of manifestation. This is what happens. You know, what we reap or as we sow is what we reap, um, cause and effect. So we can use these laws and, um, and apply them to ourselves to get a deeper understanding of our actions and to the world. So this is how, through the knowledge of natural law, we can understand the human condition. Okay. So for, so natural law, it's, it's based on, uh, objective morality. And, um, yeah, if we're talking about human behavior, absolutely. Yeah. So, so how would that apply in someone's life? Like what would, what would be considered a wrongdoing and what would be considered a right doing and how, and if, if we are to take that kind of information in and try to apply it in our lives, what can we expect to, to happen? Is there, sure. is there a lot of intuition that needs to be developed within you in order for you to really kind of see those parallels between your actions and the repercussions, whether it's weeks or months later or however long it may be? Yeah, absolutely. So natural law is karma. 
but karma is not sudden and karma, even though it does work on an individual basis, it's, it's very minute and it's over your whole life. Um, but when we look at it in, in the human condition, karma is really, it accumulates over an aggregate, the collective of humanity. So we look at, so we exist in this world and we take actions, right? Those actions are going to have an effect. So looking at objective morality, and this is the big problem in culture nowadays, is that everyone thinks morality is relative. It changes from time and place and culture. So, you know, a group of people can can say, um, well, we do things different here. This is our morality. We, we hear people say, well, I have a different type of morality. And that's not the case. Morality is the, the definitive knowing of right behavior versus wrong behavior. Now, the common denominator is harm. So there's unlimited amount of rights that we can take, right? We, I mean, we don't even list those, but we can use a method called apophysis. And that is looking at the negative to, to get a better understanding of the affirmative. So if we look at the wrongdoings, what are the wrongdoings? And we can sum them up in just, just a few. Murder, assault, rape, theft, uh, coercion, trespass, and, and deception, willfully lying. And all of those are a taking of something. It's a taking of rights, which is a taking of property. All rights are property rights because you own your body, right? If you create something, you put your energy into it. It's an extension of you. So all of the wrongdoings um, are, are a form of theft in some way. So that's how we can understand objective morality. And this doesn't change with anyone, right? It's not, it, there's no, um, no one has a higher moral standard. It's objective all across the board. As humans, we are all equal in our rights. We're not equal in our abilities and our characteristics. But when it comes to natural human rights, we're all equal. And a wrongdoing is always a wrongdoing because of harm. Yeah. That's a great explanation. I appreciate that. And and it's really, it's really like for people that just think that, uh, well, the Constitution gives us our rights or and things along those lines. Well, you look at the beginning like sentences, like we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. We are endowed by our creator with certain, with certain inalienable rights. I mean, that's basically it. That's the long short of it. So it's yeah. so for people that even are still in that kind of mindset of the Constitution and the government and, and like we just need to put in the good, the right people in charge. It's, it's, we're already contradicting ourselves just based off of that because we're, we're reading that and we're saying the constitution is great, but then we're saying that now something that's a right is wrong. And then something that's a wrong is a right. And we're voting for it. And we're thinking that that's the process, but we are now by our creator with certain inalienable rights. So it, that's it. It's <laughs> yeah. Let's, so let, it's, let's yeah. Let, let me touch on that a little bit. Cause that's a, that's a huge point because even so-called freedom orientated people, they always go to this point where the constitution grants us our rights. And that's not the case at all. Your rights come from, uh, from nature, from the creator, because you exist, you have these rights. So they're inherent in the natural world. They do not come from a piece of paper. Now, the founding fathers, they this was their their interpretation of what they knew natural rights were at that time. And they wrote it down as the Constitution, which actually created the government at that point. This is why Thomas Paine, uh, he was not for the Constitution whatsoever. And, you know, he backed out and um, there was, uh, you know, there was a whole bunch of that's a whole different story we can go down. But there were some definitely some mishaps. But we can we can learn, we can take some wisdom and, and from the philosophy of the founding fathers. And but to understand that these were flawed men. Right. But they they played a, a crucial role in uh, American history as a stepping stone of consciousness. Um, unfortunately, we have degraded so much that, you know, I mean, I'm sure they're rolling in their graves for sure. Um, but let's take this knowledge a step further and apply it to the real world. So we have government. We have worldwide government. And what is government? Government isn't an entity. It's just human beings. But human beings that have a certain state of mind, they believe that morality is relative, meaning they can say what rights are. And they can dictate the rights. 
Now, this is a huge fallacy because you can't delegate a right you don't have, meaning I can't go steal from my neighbor and I can't get a group of my friends together and go steal from my neighbor, right? So I can't call my group, oh, we're just the, we're your representatives of the, the neighborhood now, so you have to pay me, right? That's a wrongdoing. That, that's theft. You're, you're stealing. So, but government, they say that they represent the people. And, and the word represents means to act on one's behalf. So now we're getting into like a tacit agreement where because the people don't step up and say, no, 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 you don't act on my behalf. I'm a human being. I own myself. I govern myself and my actions. So we don't need representation. But since that they're saying they're representing the people, then they can delegate rights. So this is just straight folly. And obviously we can look at the world nowadays and, you know, uh, the, the big question I ask people are, are we free? Are we truly free? Do we have the freedom to exercise our free will, our free will rights, unrestrained, unrestricted? And the answer is no, because you, everyone every day pays taxes you know, in a form of, you know, if you're buying stuff at the groceries or whatever, you have police officers pulling you over just because you didn't have the right sticker on your car or you were just you were driving funny, even though there was no victim and you did no harm. So there was no violation of of hu human rights to another. Right. These are just pirates, ultimately, but they have a superiority complex where they are god on earth they think they are better and above other human beings because they hold this belief in authority they are the authorities they have a shiny badge or they're a politician and they're able to write legislation and write it down on paper and then it's a right see so we're what's going on nowadays is that the majority of people in the world um have a false belief system of the belief in authority so it's it's something powerful and it's a huge self-realization that people need to get to and the only way they're going to get there is if they truly understand objective morality and how the natural world works so we're talking about what is natural which is real or artificial which is fake artificial is man-made natural is not man-made it exists inherently so it's powerful stuff but yes, it, extremely definitely. important. This is the most important information because with all the events going on, right there, the dialectics, they're keeping people in limbo. Uh, there's always some kind of fear based trauma going on for people. And they and people focus on these events when these events are just the symptoms of an underlining cause. And that underlining cause is that that human beings have a false belief system, the belief in authority, and they they tacitly agree because they don't say no, they're giving it power. And, you know, unfortunately, these these people that think they're in a position of authority, they uh, they can they have people under a spell. Right. The word government means mind control. Gubernare mens mentes. So they they are the order givers. And then human beings that subscribe to this false belief system actually perform the actions in the form of police officers, military, you know, um, people paying the government, right? The, the government takes money. So everything's stolen money from the government. But, you know, people are, um, they're supporting and condoning this belief system. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And it's, yeah, we're just, we're focusing on the the realm of effects and not the, the cause. What's the causal factor? Like when you're a child and you see something you don't really understand, you ask your parents, how does this work? And then they say, oh, this, this, and this. Oh, well, why? Why is that? Why, 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 why? And they keeps asking why, and they get more into the nuts and bolts and get to the fundamentals of what it is that creates this thing to, like the airplane to fly or for the train to go or anything like that. And exactly. it's just like the curiosity is almost completely squashed out of uh, people after they go through schooling and just the creative aspect and just questioning. Just saying, okay, well, I mean, they went to school. They, they, you know, they took the courses. They, they put the hours and the years into this. So they obviously must know this must be. I mean, so many smart people are in this kind of field. They're, they're, this must be the best way we can do it, you know. And it's, it's, and it, it's. I can, I can totally empathize with that, and I, I, I can understand the mindset. But it's just look around. Like we can't think that way anymore. It's just naive at this point. It's with everything that's going on, and so it's, it's really 
it's, 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 I understand it, but then it's still extremely frustrating because it's, oh, yeah. um, especially as I've come to more understand like just natural law and like more of the occult aspect of things. It's just, it, I mean, it, it basically sums it all up. I mean, this is what we should be looking at the stuff that's not for us all to see. It's just things that are sequestered that are hidden. And why is it hidden? It creates a power differential with a knowledge differential. And these people are so united in their thinking that they're able to just smack us around. And it's, I, I, and realistically, I find it so hard to believe that they, they're even going to fail. I, I, they'd have to be brain dead to fail. Like I can't even imagine. I would just be like, Oh, kill switch. I'm in a cave somewhere, you know, whatever. You're not, I'm not, you guys aren't going to kill me. Like, this is it. Like, there's no way, like I can't imagine them not having like 10 aces up their sleeves. So it's, I think we have oh, a yeah. long way to go, but I'm not sure how we're going to win it. But I mean, I, th I know that teaching natural law and people trying to do the right thing because it's the right thing. And not because some schmuck said it, but because it's you apply it in your life and you see you're causing no harm to people. But it's, yeah, it's still like I, I still find it hard to believe that they're going to lose <laughs> just because like I don't want to overestimate them, but I don't want to underestimate them. I try to be realistic, but I want to be hopeful. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough out there, especially now. And like you were saying with the fear and trauma, like even more fear and trauma than we could have ever imagined on a, such a huge scale, not just pockets of civilizations, but like almost globally entirely. So it's, uh, it's yeah. really, it's really scary out there. And um, even with the, the rollbacks on some of these things, I don't trust that for a second. I said this off air. I just, I think it might just be in a re release valve. They know that we're getting more upset. So they're just kind of trying to say, hey, we're on your side. You know, you guys are making a difference by by standing up, you know, and don't worry about it. And then pff, something else is going to happen, whatever it might be, whether it's another kind of virus thing or uh, online exactly. terrorism or something like that. They yeah. take out that power in certain certain pockets of the country or the globe. But, um, you know, it's it, it, it's perception management for behavior control. Everything that's going on right now, it's all about to control your perception. And when, when, cause your behavior is dictated by what you know, right? And this is why beliefs are so powerful and also so dangerous because, you know, belief is based in dogma. Knowing is, is based in knowledge. When you know something, you're not scared of it. All fear is based from, from ignorance, the lack of knowledge, fear of the unknown. So, um, you know, today. People have to understand first that the social engineers, the people that are pulling the strings, yes, they are advanced psychologists. They have aces up their sleeve for sure. And, uh, you know, a question I've been getting from a lot of people is um, it seems kind of, you know, hopeless, right? It's like why people aren't waking up fast enough and all this. And what I have to say about that is this is, this is going to take lifetimes, right? This is definitely going to take lifetimes. Our grandchildren are going to be fighting this war, most likely. I mean, sooner the better. I'm all for that. But we need to get out of the mindset of we need a certain type of, we have to hit a certain type of marker of change within our life. This is this is kind of the ego wants to do that. We, we want to see the change in, in vast uh, dynamics in our lifetime, when in reality, that's probably not going to be the case. So we do this work and we fight this war, right? This is a war for souls. We do this because it's the right thing to do. And it's the moral thing to do. So, you know, to evolve, we have to get involved. And, um, but, you know, the more people like yourself doing this podcast, that's excellent. The more people that get out there and talk about um, objective morality and natural law, then, um, then definitely it's going to create a ripple effect and the process is, is going to speed up for sure. But I, I'm a prepper propagator. I prepare for every situation and, um, and then I propagate knowledge of, of morality and freedom. So. Fantastic. Yeah. I'd love to delve into that at some point, uh, sure. whether now or in the future, that'd be, I'd love to talk about like the prepping aspect. Cause that's definitely something yeah. I'm all oh, about whenever. and it's super important. Um, well, I'll give you a little taste. I'll say this because since I'm, I'm really big on herbalism, everyone's stocking up food and stuff like that. I, I mean, I might have a little bit of like canned beans or something like that, but the knowledge that I, that I've been, you know, really diving into the last several years is foraging, you know, nature is abundant. I'm not worried about food because I know I can just, you know, walk around in a five mile square radius and have all the food that I need because what culture has, like what you're saying, programmed and conditioned us to think about everything, about the natural world and how we operate. It's all artificial. It's all incorrect. So 
for prepping aspect, I mean, learning, learning knowledge about plants and foraging, that is a huge aspect. And I highly recommend anyone to get, uh, you know, get a foraging book in your local area and then practice it, go out there culture, you know, wants to say certain plants are weeds, right? Like the dandelion, dandelion. when the, the dandelion is the most medicinal plant, you can, the root, the leaves, the stems, the flowers, it's all has different properties that you can use for it. You know, it's nature is medicine as well. It's there uh, for us to be in a symbiotic relationship with it, meaning in harmony. And it's, it's incredibly abundant and healing. And I mean, just it, it has all its bases covered. If we need to look for um, a um, like a mentor for humanity, right? A good model. It's nature. Human beings are not the apex of creation. Nature is. So we need to uh, we need to understand how she operates and how she manifests, which is the natural wor world as we know it. So, yeah, it's yeah. a huge topic, and I'll do it whenever you want because I got yeah. all kinds of stuff. Fantastic. Yeah, because I remember looking into getting a book for my local area and in Illinois. And I didn't pull the trigger on that for some reason. I'm not sure why, but I definitely need to get something like that because yeah, it's great. Just going out on a walk and go to forest preserve, whatever, seeing what you could find. I remember I found this past year, I found a huge, like at least 30, 40 feet long of like where it's black raspberries. And I was like, holy shit, this thing has been right out back my house this whole time. I haven't noticed it. <laughs> yeah, like, man. You think I would notice like the stems and the spines and it's like purple and all that stuff. But I didn't even re realize it until I was walking past one day. And I was like, wow, this is a ton right here. Grabbing yeah. a couple handfuls here and there. So it's, yeah, it's, it goes right to your point. And um, I wanted to touch on a couple of comments. Uh, Lindsay, uh, yeah, so true. When you were talking earlier, our freedoms and rights don't come from any institution, any piece of paper, any government official comes from God, our creator. And I totally agree with that. 100%. Just like education does not come from government schooling is schooling as well, right? People think that, oh, you can only get education if you go to government schooling. It's like, no, man, we're in the school. The world is the school. We're here to we can learn every minute, every day, whenever we want. So it's the same. They do the same thing with schooling as they do with rights. You know, your freedoms only come from the government. Your rights only come from the government. So, yeah. Yeah, it's just, definitely. It's, it's I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. And great uh, comment. Great comment, Lindsay. Yeah. And then uh, math 1989 says they gain total control through the central bank digital currencies, which equals a complete loss of financial freedom for the individual building and using decentralized crypto culture is the answer. Thumbs up. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I, I agree with that for sure. I, I support cryptocurrency. I think there's a uh, there's a positive way to use it and there's the wrong way to use it. So it's good that um, you have control over your your crypto. Yeah. And, and that's also just another huge uh, it's it's I don't think it's the, the biggest. It's not the root root cause, but I think it's such a huge uh, like like part of that route, you know, it's like sure. the financial system and us and the inflation and going from one parent working to now you need two and then they need to have two jobs. No more. You have to have a babysitter now. And then the cost of everything goes up. And especially well, now with the food supply and all that stuff, as well as the endless printing. So, yeah. And here's the thing with the financial system, right? They create, they, they have money, which is a median of energy, right? Cause energy, your time and attention, your energy is the real currency. So, um, they're going to with crypto digital currency and stuff. Yeah, they're going to control some of that and they're going to use it to their benefit. But we need to use it for our benefit as well. Unfortunately, in the matrix, we need resources. So there are there's many, many avenues that we can take to use cryptocurrency as as a benefit and use those resources to uh, implement, you know, communities and technology using the technology in our benefit to expand our message of freedom and uh, and fight this war so it's it's a double-edged sword and there's definitely balance there but um yeah we definitely need to use it yeah for sure and i have uh two brothers that are super into crypto and i'm very very blessed to have them in my life i, I wouldn't have seen the zeitgeist documentaries if it wasn't for my oldest brother so it's i definitely owe a lot of gratitude to, to both of them one of my brothers is big into it and so yeah they just give me so much information that I can look into and stuff. And they've kind of pointed me in the right direction. Bitcoin sucks, you know, it's slow, unreliable, expensive. And it's, I don't know why. And, and that's the thing, like they're, they're pumping this one coin up or in Ethereum, but like, that's the main thing people hear. And then they hear blockchain and stuff and no one really knows much about it. Even yeah. me, I have brothers that are really into it. I don't even know half of what they know. So it's, I definitely take a lot of their advice. You know, I had, um, 
they recommended I, I have this gentleman on Shama Chancellor on my channel and he helped, he was creating the Lotus uh, crypto and they, he kind of was on in Bitcoin and Bitcoin cash. Uh, and then, yeah, so he made his own. And so like, I'm not a financial advisor. Don't take my, don't invest, please just look into it for yourself. But, uh, but yeah, it was really interesting. I read the white paper, you know, talking about nonviolence and volu voluntary interactions with each other. And I, like, that's what I'm all about. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I see some good ones out there, but, uh, yeah, you obviously you have to pay attention and do the, sure. take the time to look into things. So yeah, most definitely. Yeah. It, it, even with the web three coming out, right. The, uh, web 3.0, which is the metaverse, there's freedom orientated groups that are, that are, you know, um, starting out as well. They're called DAOs. They're decentralized autonomous organizations. And, you know, these are pretty much digital communities, right. Um, that, that have, uh, voluntar voluntarism, anarchism, freedom oriented minds that, that are decentral, uh, decentralized and all about, um, expanding, you know, the good message and getting, getting people opportunities to, to collect some of those resources and use it for a positive, uh, outlet. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. I'd love yeah. to hear more about that. Or if you have uh, any links, I'd love to check that out. I in, sure do. Uh, I'll, I'll send them to you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I'll, comment, I'll put them in the description or the comment section. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Actually I'll, I'll give, I'll give a shout out on the stream. My, uh, one of my, my good friends, Logan Hart, he has a, um, a, uh, discord channel and, um, social media platform channels. It's called the crypto protocol, the crypto launch protocol. And he dies into cryptocurrency, also the DAOs and the, and the web three and, and a whole plethora of information. And he's, you know, anarchist natural law teacher. Um, his, he also has a channel called the wizard factory. So he's definitely knowledgeable. That's, a, that's a good resource. I'll send you a link. Yeah, I, I, I met him at a uh, Narcadelphia in 2019. So yeah. He oh, was, you were there? Shit. I was there yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And so, yeah, he was, he was, he was nice. And I, I did see, I've seen, I've seen like one of his podcasts, the wizard factory and I like the production and, and like, he does like a lot of music too. So yeah. Heart so fire productions. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. He's, I've been wanting to get him on my channel. I haven't reached out to him in, in forever, but yeah, I'd love to have him on at some point too. Oh yeah. Definitely, um, definitely reach out, man. That's what, that's one benefit nowadays with like what's going on with the pandemic and stuff. There are, I wouldn't say there's a great awakening. I would say there's a great awareness and where there's a great awareness, like-minded individuals start coming together, right? They start getting on the same frequency. So a lot of people have connected and it, that's good to see. It's just getting action, actualizing, right? And putting it into play, so. Yeah, most definitely. Um, Math 1989 said again, uh, Lotus is building a reciprocal culture. And uh, yeah, if you wanna leave another comment about just describing that briefly, that'd be fantastic. And then, um, Natural Freedom League, your boys. <laughs> when are you gonna cut your beard? <laughs> I gotta cut it soon, man. This it, it's it's becoming self aware. <laughs> <laughs> I know what uh, I had your thumbnail as you freaking just like me, clean like, cut, clean cut, and then all of a sudden you it. come on. I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't see the leather jacket anywhere. I don't know what's going on. Chill, Gandalf. <laughs> And then uh, Lindsay said, my good friend is into foraging and she literally goes to a local forest preserve in the summer and gets a free lunch straight from the forest. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Nice. So uh, yeah. Great. I love foraging mushrooms as well. I, I love, yeah, I mean, just a hiking trail very close to my house. There was just on about six, six or seven trees. There were oyster mushrooms. I found oh, some, man. some shaggy mushrooms, uh, shaggy lion uh, mushrooms. It was just phenomenal. So, Wow. Fantastic. God, medicine, yeah, food and medicine everywhere, that. man. Yeah, no, that's, that, that would be almost my, my number one thing, right? Cause what is, what is real intrinsic value? It's not silver. It's not gold. You can't shelter yourself, eat it, you know, uh, uh protect yourself with it. It's it, real intrinsic value. It comes from nature. It means from nature. So you can eat it, you know, drink it, shelter yourself, uh, protect yourself with, with it. So, those are the the fundamentals that people need to really focus on when they think about preparedness. So, you know, um, weapons, a way to defend yourself, um, how to make shelter, food. That's why foraging is on my the top of my list. And um, and just gathering that knowledge, man, it's it is the value. Yeah. Yeah, most certainly. And I remember when I when I first heard 
uh, Mark Passio talk about gold and silver not having intrinsic value. I was like, oh, whoa, what's going on here? And because because I was into the um, like the zeitgeist thing, they talked a little bit about banking, and then I got into like no money, we don't need money, resource based economy. You know, let's just globally decentralize it. You know, and it'll, it'll be okay. And yeah. then so like my brothers were talking to me about gold and silver, and I was like, ah, man, we don't need that. <laughs> and then I watched Hidden Secrets of Money from Mike Mal- by Mike Maloney, and that was I was like, oh, okay, well, transitionally, I, it makes sense to me. So I got some of that, but but I still understand the intrinsic value is not there. Besides, like with technology nowadays, but yeah. um, because it, it, mean- it only has value because humans give it value for in some some way or some form. But ultimately, if, if the grid you know went down. And, and, you know, there's some kind of catastrophe or something. What, I mean, who, what are you going to use gold or silver for? I mean, you might be able to use gold as some type of conductor, same with silver. Uh, but, you know, you got to have a large amount of it. So, yeah. And I, I think, I think most people are, a lot of people obviously still have that money. Like we need money kind of aspect. So I think I, for me, I feel like people would still kind of trade with that because they would say, okay, well, the dollar sucks or something like that. So, I'll take this instead, but yeah. yeah, for but for like fundamentally changing things, yeah, it's not, it's not Ar- going to go. Artificial medians, right? Just like religion, I'm extremely spiritual. Consider consider myself a spiritual anarchist. I don't need a median. I don't need a middleman to uh, delegate uh, my relationship with 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 creation. Right? Same thing with religion and a priest. They're the middleman. Like if you need to commune with the creator, you have to go to a priest to do it. That's the only way. Same thing. That, that's what government is. That's what the financial industry is. That's what all these these industries are. They're trying to be the middleman from you and your own responsibility, and um, and and to be self sufficient. Yeah. So, and the key factor is knowledge, right? People are dependent on these government institutions because they lack knowledge. Yeah, and and like and because yeah, I, I like what you were saying earlier. Are we really free? I don't. Obviously, I don't believe we are. And we've been so sheltered and we got like that Stockholm syndrome where we've fallen in love with our captors. We need government. It would just be utter chaos in the streets. I'd much rather have violent street gangs roaming the streets because I would know everyone would know these guys are bad. We don't exactly. they don't have any more rights than us. They can't come on here and say, you got to give us protection money or whatever. No, you're get out of my face or get out of my life. You know, it's, but yeah. because they have a suit on and then they have all these other people that are officials and they have all these kind of little hocus pocus little meetings and things that they do, it's somehow a lot more uh, authoritarian. I mean, I just don't, I just, at this point, yeah. I, it's so hard for me to kind of grasp that again. Like, cause I used to have that mindset where I couldn't, I could not conceive of having this mindset that I currently have. And it's, it's just, I don't know. It's so hard to kind of go back into that mindset and really think about it. Cause it just doesn't make oh, sense. Yeah. It oh doesn't yeah, makes sense. Yeah, and logically, I mean, on on all levels, it's you, like once you unplug and and you have that realization, you can't go back. I mean, there are I'm sure there's people that do that, and you know, you're selling your soul out when you do that for sure. But um, um, I forgot what to say. Oh, that's why the internal work is step one. Like you have to deprogram yourself and decondition and 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 ask yourself why do I believe the things that I believe. That has to be the first step. So that's why it's important. And then, you know, people that ask like, well, who's going to build the roads? You know, that's like saying like, well, who's going to pick the cotton if there's, if, you know, there's no, no slaves. It's like, it's such a, I mean, it's a crazy question, but they haven't done the internal work. So their imagination is not firing correctly and uh, they don't have the, the fundamentals, right? The origins of mind. This yeah. And, and I mean, just look around the country and are the roads pristine and in perfect condition? No, not exactly. So it's yeah. already a huge fail as it is. Just look back in just 50 years, the green revolution. Did they, did they solve world hunger? No, no, they didn't. They didn't do anything. What about the drug war? No, like war on crime, war on poverty. Nope. Nope. Okay. So what are we doing now? Like, are we just going to try to get the good guys in now, even though we know that there are there's lobbyists and all this stuff that hasn't been taken care of. An election, an election was just stolen. Broad daylight. A lot of people notice it. Nothing still happens. And we're like, okay. Whatever. Exactly. They're never held accountable whatsoever. In. And then, and then you know, people, people's imagination have been deadened. They think, well, this is how it's always been. You know, I call it the uh, domestication of humanity. It's like, oh, well, what can I do? 
That's one of them. Well, what, what, what change can I do? Or it's always been like this, or, you know, humans are just are, are bad. So we need bad guys to protect us from themselves. It's like, it's just, yeah. it's, it's pretty rough. It's pretty rough. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. <laughs> um, I know earlier you mentioned Mark Passio and his ability to really kind of put things in a nice, a nice complete package. I wanted yeah. to, this was going to be my second question, but we've kind of gone back and forth, <laughs> gone We're a little flowing. bit around. We're flowing. Yeah, that's um, cool. So I wanted to get a, a little bit more of a perspective on, on other people that inspire you and some people that you've really uh, taken in a lot of information from and you have a lot of respect for. Yeah. So I'll start that off with, with my own parents because I was raised um, different from most, most kids. Um, I grew up on a ranch, seven acres and my parents, uh, we lived like on the outskirts of a suburb, but even my, my own parents, they were considered like the hillbillies, the hillbillies of the suburbs. They were, they had a different mindset and, um, culture really didn't, didn't grab us as, as young kids and they gave us freedom. So I had an understanding of, of, of rights and freedom at a young age, maybe not, you know, conceptually, but, um, we, we had that in play at, in our upbringing. Um, so yeah, my, my parents definitely inspire me. Um, they've always been supportive on whatever, whatever we, I do. And that's, that's phenomenal. And, um, yeah, I'm still bringing them this information. So, you know, hopefully things change. Um, but of course, Mark Passio, absolutely. I've had the pleasure to work with Mark, uh, personally doing graphics and graphics for his website and stuff. And, for the last like year and a half. And um, so I've had personal conversations with him and stuff like that, that that man is is incredible. I mean, uh, he's human. Let's say that first, right? People, you know, you can't put him in a demigod category or a guru or a leader. He doesn't want that anyways. Um, but he's a hard working, uh, inspiring person that always shows respect to his peers and and love. And that's amazing. And his I mean, I can't say enough how hard this man works. It's incredible. Um, so yeah, no, his, his work inspired me. And um, um, going back to occultism, I've really got into occultism, all, almost all the mystery traditions and and many different types of ancient culture studies. And um, I felt like I was really hitting the core on that because I was corresponding all these traditions with certain... Um, statements or messages like they all kind of had the same thing that they were talking about and you know come to find out they're they're talking about the laws of nature but when mark put it put his work out there and he kind of applied it to your to yourself but mainly to the world and what's going on that was that was huge so yeah he, his work's definitely been a huge inspiration for me and um not only on like the the knowledge and spiritual side the technology side um, Mark is, a, you know, a, a genius when it comes to technology and troubleshooting, uh, and using logic and reason when it comes to tech. And, um, you know, I had the blessing to take his class, how to be the true media two years in a row. And, um, I learned an incredible amount of information, even on the second year. And I highly recommend anyone, uh, take his, his class. I mean, it's Mark, he's, he's a great teacher, so he's going to give you the grammar, the knowledge is going to give it all right to you. And then it's on you to put it into practice and, and apply it. So, but, um, you know, we need the tech. I, I didn't start the, doing the great work of educating people about, uh, about freedom and morality for at least two years because one, I, I didn't have hope for humanity. So my, the moral obligation wasn't there fully yet. But mainly because I was anti-technology, I wanted to go homestead in the woods and make my tinctures and and you know and run around naked and that kind of shit, howl at the moon. I mean, that's what I really wanted to do, and I still will do that. But there's a, obviously a balance there. Um, but we live in a technological age, and it can be we can wield this these tools as a weapon, a weapon to increase the voice of truth because the voice of deception and lie is extremely loud and we need to, uh, we need to become louder. So 
Yeah, most certainly. I appreciate that and, and your honesty too about <laughs> what you want to be doing. <laughs> That's fantastic. I know because I, I have people that are that are wanting to do that sort of thing, have a homestead, you know, have a little community and stuff. But for me, it's also that's great. And that's fantastic. It's a great goal to have, but we also have to remember the fundamentals of like, what are we going to build the whole community on? Like, is it going to be the whole natural law thing or is it going to be, we're kind of in that relativistic kind of mindset. So like, for me, it's still a lot of these people that are trying to build these communities. I just hope they try to keep that sort of thing in mind as best they can when they're building their communities. Like, what do you think right and wrong are? Like, are you a good person? Not just, Oh, you think the vaccines suck too. I'm just going to go with you because we have that kind of, that basic kind of agreement. So it's got, um, got to be based on principles. Yeah. Principles mean first things first. So you have to have, you have to understand natural law and objective morality and what rights are. That's, that's the fundamental of, of society, what it needs to be. Right. And I'm all for communities and stuff. And, and hopefully I will do that one day, but yeah, the people that I'm going to be, uh, you know, um, communing with definitely have to have an understanding of principles and i want to be able to also do the work as well so there's a balance there's no exiting the system fully right there's all humanity is enslaved they have every they have the planet locked down currently as a prison it's not inherently a prison but currently it is a prison so there's no really escaping it you know going out into the woods and you know not participating at all i mean maybe but eventually going through your whole life you're eventually going to get caught up into something um that's happening in the world in the modern world so yeah definitely but, you know there's definitely a balance there you know you can still homestead kind of um you know work the loopholes of society and um and government and also do your work of you know spreading the message yeah for sure i i totally agree i appreciate you saying that um God, it's already been 40, almost 47 minutes. Um, I wanted to get into your work. Um, if you want to delve, give people some information on, on like the thing, the things you create and what you're all about, what you plan on creating in the future. And, um, I'll yeah. be sharing your, your website also as your, as you awesome. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. that. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll talk about real quick too the, the funnel conference and that kind of leads, leads to what I'm doing currently. And Perfect. Uh, my work in in a whole. So we just had last weekend, we had the, the funnel conference. This is the first annual um, funnel as in freedom under natural law. And um, so we have a group called the Natural Freedom Alliance. And this started out as a pretty much a support group in the beginning stages of uh, the pandemic. Um, there were some of us that I mean, some of us were reaching out looking for like minded individuals to communicate to. And um, so we kind of focused on our area here in Northern California and that branched out. We have, you know, a Canadian and and um, and someone down in Southern California. So we have nine people and we would go out on the streets. Anyone that was local, we would go out and educate the public. And, you know, we had meetings every week and we did this for a year and a half. Um, all the people have taken the how to be the true media class. So they had the tech knowledge. It was time to create action. And uh, we've known each other for a while. So we decided to, you know, being inspired uh, by Mark Passio and uh, mainly the seed conference uh, that Brandon Martin and uh, Nate Cap and Douglas Martin put on uh, back in May of, of last year, uh, we decided to do a virtual conference. I mean, at first we wanted to do an in-person conference, but there, you know, with what was going on, I mean, there was no way that was going to be efficient. So, um, we did a virtual conference and that was last weekend. It was a huge success. Everyone worked their ass off. Um, we kept the presentations to just our group and uh, we had people that reached out and we were extremely grateful and we were going to do more funnel conference, uh, events. And then we're going to actually expand it and evolve it to other um, content creators so that that's going to be fantastic. Um, so, yeah, so we had uh, eight presentations and um, um, I did a lot of the graphics and Dom did the the uh, the website and John and Chris and Leslie and Rob and Jen and Vienna. They did presentations and, and did accounting and managing. And I mean, everyone had a role. It was phenomenal we were co cooperating and it, it was just a really good example. And, uh, I feel really good about it. it. It went off without a hitch and it was really smooth. We got a really good reception from it. And, um, and it was just all, 
you know, love and respect really from the viewers. We didn't have any streams go down. Um, no censorship, knock on wood, and then and no and no trolls for the most part. So that was it was great. And you know, hopefully this is what we're here to do. We're here to have the message of objective morality, how to act in the world and and put that message out to the public. That's what we need to do. So everyone that's listening, you know, grab your phone, first understand the information and apply it to yourself, and then start making content. Even if it's just on your phone and you're doing short videos, we need more people to talk about this kind of stuff. So, and then uh, lastly, um, my website, Natural Freedom League, my partner, uh, John Rowland, um, he had Natural Freedom League. He had the website and the concept. And when I met him, uh, we hit it off and, um, you know, we were vibing on the same, the same level. And so I did the logo and we just started creating the podcast and, and now it's evolving and, uh, we're looking to, um, to do some, some new things as well that we got in the works. So we have a video podcast that we're going live, uh, every Saturday, um, 7 PM Pacific time, and that's 10 PM Eastern time. And we do that on Saturdays. So yeah, it's going good, man. Awesome. So the guy that helped you with the website is the one that you're doing the podcast with as well. Oh, John did help help with the website, but also Dom did m most of oh, the website yeah. stuff. But yeah. yeah, but but John and Dom, they're still, they're part of our Natural Freedom Alliance group. So yeah, it's good. See, and that's what's fantastic about it. It's 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 like the the thoughts, emotions, and actions, and it's it's not just one person. Like if you were to just do all this yourself and you had to do all the website stuff, you may not have all the technical know how to get all that stuff accomplished. So having three people basically in some form helping out and using their willpower to ha make this happen. It's just look what, cause I just showed the, the website just now and it looks fantastic. You know, it's yeah, it came out nice. great. Yeah. It came out really, really nice. So that's excellent. Good for you, man. I, that's something I still need to do is try to get my own kind of domain to, to plant all my, my content on there. So it's just easier, but uh, yeah, that's, that's great. And thank you for all, that whole description that, cause you basically tackled, both of those questions in one stone so right on yeah <laughs> so thank you for that so we now we still have it off. yeah that's, that's great and um so i wanted to so since we still got a few i wanted to keep it at least like within an hour cool um so we basically covered all the questions really quick but i just wanted to show um the, the comments so like when math said the uh, lotus is building a reciprocal culture he was saying the concept behind lotus is to give it to people for doing things you appreciate it is a token of appreciation. You can also earn Lotus through POW mining or by helping to build the Lotus ecosystem. And so, yeah, me speaking with the, the Shama gentleman. Uh, yeah, it's, it seems interesting. And I know that when Bitcoin split off into Bitcoin cash, it didn't really go anywhere. And um, it's been really sad to see a lot of these cryptos that have these good concepts and these good ideas that really just don't go anywhere. They're just kind of stifled, whether it's infighting or whatever else, or it's funding whatever it may be. And it's just sad to see that we're still so far behind in terms of, me, in terms of making actual tangible, like something that we can actually use as a form of payment yeah. readily available for people. And it's easy for them to access it and, and get more of it and trade it around. And so that's still got a long way to go. And uh, it seems like this thing's going on the, uh, on a good track. So um, sweet. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. yeah. And he says, also says the devs behind the blockchain are aiming for worldwide scale slash usage concept of giving as appreciation is what fuel is what will fuel uh wait because he corrected himself it he said it is the fuel that will build the reciprocal culture so that's very interesting thank you for that description man i appreciate it um lindsay said what would you say to people that have that mindset and in terms of a world people not being able to comprehend the world without police or military government mm. That okay, that don't have that mindset. Yeah. So what would be a good for you if you were to speak to someone that was open to hearing what you had to say, but just still had that kind of ingrained inside them? Yeah, and that's see, that right there. That's what I tried to do with my my funnel conference presentation, uh, the state of freedom, what it is and is not. I tried to make a presentation that was extremely simple and easy to comprehend. So anybody can give that presentation to family members or or anybody that doesn't Ha, doesn't have any awareness of that and <clears throat> we need to get down to the causal factor and it's good to talk about rights most people are able to comprehend behavior and actions so talking about what what rights truly are explaining that first and what wrongdoings are and then applying it to the world and say well where does government get the right 
they they don't they just make it up and then go from there a process that is called um the uh um oh man i'm forgetting it um the socratic method right this is a process of asking questions to stimulate critical thinking so asking you know a friend or whatever like do you know what a right is like what the definition is and then they answer and you just move up the ladder so you know where, where do the rights come from where does government get the right if if i'm not allowed to do it and a group of people aren't allowed to do it how can government that are people how where do they get the right to do that so you're just asking them questions when someone rattles off uh knowledge um the other person can easily get in an emotional state where they're they're reactive and they're not responding so they close up and they get defensive and then you know good luck trying to talk to them again so sticking to the basics morality rights and then moving up the ladder uh, in a questioning format that is, that is the socratic method and it, it works pretty good from my experience and uh, actually larkin rose has a has a uh, a seminar the candles in the dark that he teaches that method and kind of what to say and stuff but it, it's effective yeah definitely and and i've noticed throughout my uh, the few years that i've learned this kind of stuff and i've and that's the thing like my knowledge has increased as the the t as time has passed so i've gotten just more knowledgeable i'm able to answer maybe some questions that come at me easier but it's also been my my tactfulness like how am i approaching it like how you're saying with the questions and that's how i've been sort of doing it as well i'm like what do you think about right and wrong do you think it's subjective or objective oh i think it's subjective i'm like well what do you think about karma what do you think that is uh, or do you believe that it exists yeah i think it exists I'm like, well what is karma <laughs> is that exactly is that where we are is that above us like oh no it's probably above us i'm like okay well do you think karma would have an objective right and wrong if it's <laughs> being applied in our lives? And like, huh, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so it's exactly. Just, yeah, just asking those questions. And yeah, there's not as much defense in that aspect because it's you're asking for their opinion. You're not saying you're wrong immediately, but just telling them what you think. <laughs> yeah. You're letting them do the work, right? Because they're they're answering questions. And at some point, right and you can write these questions down and practice them at some point they're going to fumble they're going to contradict themselves and that is the seed that will be planted that they're going to think about and be like damn i guess i really don't know like what whatever the, the question was right that the contradiction is what's going to fumble them and that's kind of the weight that they're going to have on their mind yeah yeah it's, it's, and i appreciate you describing that and answering her uh, her question because it's yeah it's fantastic information great and question and that goes with what i was basically going to cover as well like ways we can more widely spread this kind of message of objective morality and um and before we delve into that uh, lindsay's had one more comment uh Passio is pretty cool yeah right uh mm -hmm. because of nicholas showing me his work i decided to not become a police officer and i was very grateful for that yeah was, wow that is huge i i, I commend you that's that's amazing lindsay yeah that's awesome it's, and now she's just trying to be more in like communication so it's yeah it's like a whole open-ended type of uh kind of talk career about she can go into yeah talk about empowerment that that's where it's at right there for sure taking yeah. responsibility it, it comes down to knowledge like you have to know first right you have to know before you say no and um to to further expand the message. I think, I mean, that's why I was saying it has to be the internal work. You have to look at yourself first and, and do a correct diagnosis of yourself. And that is dis that's discomfort. That's going to be uncomfortable to do, but that has to be done. And then from there, you can know yourself better and you can know what your attributes are and your qualities, what you love to do, right? Your passions, take those attributes and those passions and, and utilize them with the message of morality natural law and uh and and human rights yeah thank you very well said um and then uh Brittany said it looks like i'm late i look forward to the replay so thank you Brittany, for what's for up Brittany? coming anyway and uh yeah leave a nice comment if you if you enjoyed it and, and you watch it all the way through let me know what you think and love to be able to have a nice conversation that's awesome thanks for being here and then trap vision says good thing trump lost I'm not sure what that has to do with anything we're basically talking about besides when we're talking about government, but it doesn't uh, matter, brother. The po yeah, politics, remember. politics is theater. It's just for you to watch it. Right. So it gets in your mind. That's all it is. It's just two yeah. wings of the same bird. It's a big dialectic. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. And I, yeah, I, I went from 
watching Fox News for five years to then getting dis like disenchanted in that and just saying what's changing. And then I went to the whole Bernie Sanders, Young Turks on YouTube. And I was seeing him getting screwed over all the time. And then they're pointing it out, saying how bad Hillary is. And then he loses, rolls over like a dog and starts supporting her. And then the people that were bad mouthing her for six months said, OK, we have to support her because now Trump it's it's her versus Trump. So we have to support her now because it's the lesser of two evils. It's like, okay, this is a joke. Yeah. So that's just, uh, that's just the realm, the realm of the effects. Those are just people that are rearranging the, the chairs on the deck of the Titanic, right? No change will come there. There is no political solution because when you know natural rights and morality, government shouldn't exist. It's illegitimate and immoral. So, and it's a, it's a violation, which is violence. Yeah. And so, so what would you say to people that think, um, well, we can have some some form of collectivizing where it's kind of like a government, but it's where there actually is like a contract or informed consent, you know, and it's all voluntary and they clearly don't have any more rights than us. And that's like an underpinning of the entire thing. And there's sure. actually accountability. Like to me, that's I mean, it makes sense. I mean, we're not going to just completely yeah. disband and just lone wolf it or something like that. Like we can still collectivize. And like when you go to a store, you're not you don't have a gun pointed to you saying here, shop at shop at Aldi. Exactly. Like, you know, it's you voluntarily go there. You know what goods they have. They provide good customer service, whatever they have a good selection. And it's. Yeah. The, yeah. the majority uh, for, for, for most people, their daily interaction is voluntary interaction, right? Go into the grocery store or, or, you know, I mean, go into businesses and, you know, no one's walking around with a gun to your head the whole time. It's only a pro it's a problem because government is just there existing and people are I mean, you can have run ins, you can get pulled over by police or, you know, when it comes to taxes and there are bad things that, that are that are going on wars and stuff. This is all created by the social engineers to create trauma for people. But uh, yeah, but I mean, you know, society based on on true freedom, it's it's consensual, voluntary interaction, cooperation, you know, all these all these good things, these good values and virtues. Yeah, definitely. Sorry, I was looking at Trap's uh, comment. Uh, okay, I'll, uh, I'll I missed just, it. Yeah, he said, um, "Yeah, but it's best not to ride the fence." And so, what I would say to that, I just it was just coming in my head. Um, I would like to just hop off the fence and kind of take a step back and see: Am I fenced in or am I fenced out? Like, exactly. am I, are the is this like a cage that I'm gonna be if I pick a side, or is it like it's it's just, you gotta take the fence out, man. Trap, take, you look take the like, fence out. Yeah, Trap, you look like you're probably around, I don't know, maybe 20 or something like that. I mean, come on. It's been. They they fence in we, farm we animals, right? Now. Just Which look is, back. To, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like you're saying farm animals. Yeah. Yep. Just like humans. That's what humans yeah. are to, to these people. They're just cattle. Yeah. And, and Trap, just ask yourself the question, like what has really fundamentally changed in the past 20 years, 30 years? Like, have we been going towards more freedom, more, more, uh, like just more prosperity for people? Are we having less wars? Are we having less violence, less crime? Look at Chicago, look at New York. I mean, it's, these things yeah. aren't changing. We're not solving the root issue. So I understand where you're coming from trap, but it's, it's, it's not left versus right. It's, it's just, they're taking how a human being should act and the feelings that they should have, like the Republicans, the, the color red, they're the father figure, the protector. Then we got the blue, the Democrats, the nanny state. Let's, Let's take care of everybody. Let's be empathetic. Let's let's try to take care of each other. So they're taking basically what, like how your brain is. You got the male, the masculine, and the feminine, and they've literally just fractured it in half. So the people that are more left brain go more towards the Republican. The people that are more right brain go more towards the Democrats. They've literally just fractured how a normal human being should be functioning, and they've just put it into two dialectics. And it's exactly it's being used against us, trap. I mean, it's obviously not solving any problems. So I appreciate you watching. And if you, you might have been late or I'm not sure, but if you feel free to look at the beginning of this interview, I think it's been it's got a lot of good information and just have an open mind. And yeah. um, with if you wanted to say anything in response to, to Trap and then uh, if you want to just yeah. tell people where they can find you and support you if they want to learn more about you. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Yeah. Trap. I, I would say, brother, go to, um, go to freedom under natural law.com. That's the conference we had. My presentation is on there. Um, you'll be able to find my presentation on all the social media platforms, um, uh, natural freedom league. And my presentation is called the state of freedom, what it is and is not. And this is a simple presentation that'll give you the, the fundamental principles of what we've been talking about. And these are principles that 
every single human being needs to know. And I don't want to make that sound like it's egoic, but I'm talking about rights, right behavior and wrong behavior and nature, the natural world and how it operates. You, I mean, we exist as humans. We need to know this. These are, you know, these are the, the rules of the game. So, um, it's definitely, um, it's required. And I tried to make the presentation simple for anyone to digest. So hopefully I, I accomplished that. And, um, I'm always open for criticism or comments. Um, anybody can can reach me. They can go to naturalfreedomleague.com. I'm also on the One Great Work Network, which is hosted by Mark Passio. And um, all my work is, is on there as well. And uh, it's under Will Keller. So uh, thanks for having me on, brother. I really appreciate it. Yeah, likewise. It really means a lot to me that you got back to me so quickly and you had such interest. And uh, I definitely want to watch your guys' presentations. I'm so glad that that was created and you guys had good success. You guys didn't have any kind of internet problems or anything like that. I'm very grateful for that. Thank you for doing what you're doing. I'm I'm just, it's just pump. It's just really awesome to see just people that kind of grouped together and they made this happen, you know? Yeah, it wasn't in person, you know, the whole conference, yada, yada, but the message itself got across. The presentations got it's themselves across and that's the most important thing in my view. And then people can say whatever they want about, oh, it's not, may not look good or this guy's connection was a little fuzzy. Well, it's, it's really about the information and it's trying your best to not have the, just the visual aspect of it kind of just block out your interest in what the person's saying in general. So I just, yeah. I wish you all the best, man. I hope we can talk again soon Anytime. and um, I wish you the best of luck and I just, yeah, just stay safe. And thanks again for coming on. Really means right on me. brother. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. And uh, thank, thank you for the viewers. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And for if you sure. just want to, if you just want to stick around, uh, just for a minute or two afterwards, we can just yeah. chat. Cool. Um, and thank you, Lindsay. I appreciate it. But, uh, yeah, thank you everyone Thanks, so Lindsay. much for watching. Stay safe. Take care guys.